Call the police on my kid for watching a movie. No afternoon nap for you. I was around 10 to 12 when this happened. Our old next door neighbor was a nosy, lazy stay at home mum. She liked to complain about almost everything. My sister, five years older, had friends ranging from the same age to a few years older, and they would often come to our house for most of every weekend. Sometimes it would be a couple of friends, other times up to 15 or so. The neighbor, surprisingly, never complained about a bunch of teenagers being at our house every weekend. Until she decided to, I guess. They never made a lot of noise. My dad worked weekends, and the number one rule was do not keep dad awake or wake him up. This was during school holidays in summer, so my dad had the following day off. My sister had three friends over, and that night, all they did was watch a movie. It wasn't loud. Dad couldn't hear it from our veranda. They didn't even stay late. They went home about 9.30. Come just after 10 p.m., two cops rock up on our doorstep. A noise complaint from our next-door neighbor about a wild party. They were obviously confused, as they were greeted by a grumpy, late-30s guy in a dressing gown. Book in one hand, smoke in the other, cup of tea on the table in front of him, just chilling on his veranda. Miranda instead of the rager they've been told about dad was like look i hate the kids coming here but tonight three kids were here watching a movie they left over half an hour ago i don't know what the frick she's on about he was fuming he didn't enjoy our house being the designated hangout place but as Mum always said at least we know where our daughter is But even that night, he wasn't annoyed because it was a small group watching a movie. If it was any other night, he'd be annoyed because just come over and tell him they're being too loud. But don't call the cops because they're watching a movie. Our neighbor would always have afternoon naps at 1 p.m. Her bedroom was five meters from our driveway, so pretty close. Our front yard was also huge. Our house was pretty small and sat on over a quarter acre. Two thirds of that quarter acre was our front yard. Well, the next day, the lawn needed mowing. It being summer, our summer temps go into the 40s in Celsius, dad would normally mow as early as possible in the most efficient way possible, normally taking him 40 minutes. Not that day. He waited until 12.45, and then he started the mower, and did it in the most convoluted way possible, two hours of mowing then being the responsible camper that he is he decided it was time to count the tent pegs they're kept in a metal army box there's about 300 pegs in there because why not apparently so out to the driveway right next to her bedroom window one peg at a time he took it out stood up and threw it full force at the driveway bang clash clash you get the picture then one at a time he picked them up off the driveway stood up and threw them full force back into the metal box bang clang clash she came out to scowl at him a couple of times but didn't say a word he was extra cranky that night due to the probable heat stroke but he always had such glee when recounting the story you see this is the beauty of r slash petta revenge you can't do anything about this can you what's you gonna do now call the police on your dad again after the first time i don't think so yeah of course he's being very annoying on purpose but that's not illegal and neither is watching a movie with a couple of friends at 9 30 p.m insane ruin my wedding to propose i'll ruin your proposal i am a 35 year old man and i've got a younger brother todd who is 29 who had a complicated birth and had to stay a month in the icu and because of that my parents have always doted on him and almost denied him nothing even if it was to the detriment of my sister abby who is 32 and i my brother drinks in on the attention and has on more than one occasion made himself the center of attention at either my my sister's or a cousin's special events because of this abby and i have a strained relationship with todd and our parents unfortunately todd met and fell in love with lucy who announced her own pregnancy at the baby shower my mum held for abby when i proposed to my wife michelle i just wanted to elope but she really wanted her family to be there so i invited my family out of obligation while out my best man jim noticed a receipt from a jewelry store slipped out of todd's pocket jim confronted todd about this which led to an argument jim told me everything and i told todd that he was no longer going to be a groomsman because i knew he was going to propose at my wedding todd cried to our parents which led to a blowout in my parents eyes since todd never admitted that he was going to propose to lucy at my wedding i was unfairly judging him i refused and brought up todd's past behavior my parents couldn't refute this and got todd to agree to not try anything at my wedding this wasn't enough to convince me to let him be a groomsman but i warned him that if as a guest he'd try anything I would make him regret it fast forward to the wedding and surprise surprise todd walked over to lucy and proposed to her during michelle's father daughter dance and did it in a way so that everyone would notice cue my revenge 
Jim and I had hired a woman to pretend to be Todd's side piece who cornered Todd and Lucy and claimed that she was pregnant with his baby. Todd denied this, but when she called his phone, I gave her his number and messed with Todd's phone to incriminate him. It didn't look good. Lucy threw the ring back at Todd and left in tears. When Todd saw the smile on my face, he knew it was me and I didn't respond to a single call or text from him or my parents until after the honeymoon. Lucy has thrown Todd's stuff out and has been denying access to their kid. Todd's furious and demanding I clear his name. I sent him a text saying that I had no idea what he was talking about, as well as a screenshot of a bill for the wedding and gave a vague message demanding reimbursement for half of the wedding costs. Michelle knew the whole time what I was planning and gave me the green light after Todd ruined her moment with her dad, so I felt pretty good. But now, even Abby thinks I might have gone too far. Sorry, there's no way you've taken that too far. Yeah, I get it. It might be a little bit extreme, but so is proposing to your significant other at someone else's wedding. That's ridiculous. If Todd and Lucy's relationship really is that good, I'm sure they'll get back together eventually and it'll be all right. They can work it out. And then maybe Todd can propose at a more normal, private place, not at someone else's wedding. Refuse to give a painkiller to someone crying in pain? Congrats on failing your final. Two years ago, I used to share an apartment with my sister and two other roommates. In the flat next to us lived three girls whom we've known for years, as we all used to live in the same dorm years ago, plus their two new roommates who we didn't know well. The other girls were messy and kind of immature because they were younger than us, but we all mostly got along since we go way back. This one time, my sister and one of our roommates got into a huge argument with the girls from the other flat because of them taking utensils and clothes from our place without permission and losing them. I didn't participate in the argument, but there was obvious tension between between the two flat residents. Anyway, a few days after that, after a long day of being cooped up in the library preparing for a difficult final, I got home late at night and there was only one of my roommates home that night. Now, pretty much as soon as I got home, my face started swelling up and my tooth started aching like crazy. I was in so much pain, I started crying and there were no painkillers and I had no way to get out to the pharmacy that late at night. My roommates, who also had nothing to do with the argument earlier, knocked on the door of our next door neighbors and one of their newer roommates, who we barely knew, answered the door. My roommate explained the situation to her, telling her that I'm in excruciating pain and asked if she could borrow some painkillers. The girl looks my roommate up and down and tells her, oh, well, I have painkillers, but I'm not going to give them to her because I'm the sister of the girl who got into a silly argument with her roommates. Obviously, I'm stunned that someone can be this petty, but I let it go and I survive the night. Now, here for the pettiness on my behalf. A few days after, I happen to be home late at night and I hear the doorbell ring. I open the door and lo and behold, it's the same girl who refused to spare me an ibuprofen a few days ago. Except this time, instead of being snarky, she looked super distraught and defeated. She looked both surprised and relieved that I was the one who answered the door that night. She opens her mouth. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know how to say this. My charger died on me and I have a final tomorrow morning and a submission now and I just started prepping. I know you have one like mine and I was wondering if I can borrow yours. Obviously, she was down on her luck that day because I wasn't my usual generous self. I looked her up and down and said, no, sorry, I'm using it right now. And I shut the door in her face. This might be the pettiest thing I've ever done in my life but I don't exactly hate myself for it. Nah, you definitely shouldn't hate yourself for it. It's complete and utter karma. It's justice. It's literally the same thing that happened to you just happened to her. Simple as that. And also say you were to give her the charger and she did make her finals and got the essay and et cetera, et cetera. She would then never have thought in the future about how her not giving you the painkiller affected her, you know? So I think you did the right thing. And sure, if she fails her assignment in the short term, that's a shame, but... Is it really? Because in the long term, she'll be a much better person. Don't like my silly job? You don't get its silly perks. So I work in technical theater as an assistant stage manager. There are a couple of theaters in the area, but the tech community is rather small, so we all know each other. I work for a smaller theater, but I know a few people who work at the largest theater that hosts the traveling Broadway shows. These shows are really popular and hard to get tickets for if you aren't a season ticket holder. And season tickets can run about a thousand per seat for seven shows. Now the tickets are normally about 150 for an individual show, but they can go up significantly if they know the show is going to be popular. The husband of one of the directors that I work with is on the board of the theater and sometimes can score good seats at a discounted rate. This season, Aladdin is coming to town, a show my future mother-in-law has been dying to see. She asked me if I could possibly get her and a friend a seat so they could go and see it. I called in a favor with my director and she managed to get two prime seats. Since her husband is on the board, she gets a discount. So the tickets ended up only being $75 for the two seats. 
I reserve them in my name with the understanding that my future mother-in-law will pay for the tickets. Fast forward a couple of weeks and my future mother-in-law invites me and my fiance over for dinner. Dinner goes well and I end up in a conversation with my future mother-in-law and future sister-in-law about housework. I don't know why. My future sister-in-law is a teacher and she is married to an accountant. So she said that her and her husband try to split the chores 50-50. Her mum thought that was fine and asked how my fiance and I would do it. We don't currently live together. I said probably the same, you know, 50-50. My future sister-in-law agreed, but her mum gave me the stink eye. I asked if there was something wrong, and she said, Well, my son works full-time and you don't, so I don't see how that's fair. I told her that I do work full-time, just not at a nine-to-five like my fiancé. She then laughed at me and said what I did wasn't real work, and that it was just a silly side gig, and that maybe if I got a real job, I would know what it's like to really work. Then she changed the subject. This annoyed me, because I'm very proud of the work I do. It may not be a nine-to-five, but I love my job. It's my dream job, and I do make enough to cover my expenses. It actually takes takes a certain amount of skill to properly stage manage a full-scale production. So, enter pettiness. I called up the box office for the large theatre and told them to cancel those tickets. They were in my name, so they gladly cancelled them. I then texted my future mother-in-law and told her if she thinks my job isn't real, then the side perks aren't real. So the tickets were cancelled. I then shut off my phone. The next day, when I turn on my phone, I see several missed calls and about a dozen texts from my future mother-in-law. She's fuming because her friend is coming into town specifically to see this play. I called back and told her she might still be able to get seats if she called the box office. She ended up getting seats, but they cost her 150 each and they weren't as good. Hopefully, she's learned not to insult someone and still expect to benefit from them. Yeah, this one is just ridiculous. Surely during this whole debacle, she had in the back of her mind the fact that you had got her such a big discount on two amazing seats. Was that just not going through her head at this point? Surely you'd be like, okay, well, maybe even if you had these inner thoughts of, yeah, your job is not as hard as my son's, the fact that you're getting a really solid discount. What's a discount here? Was it 150 for two seats? then she was going to get you 75 for both. So what's that? A $225 discount? Maybe that isn't the exact maths, but given my line of thinking, that was what it would be. $225 for free, yet it's not a proper job. This is a pretty proper discount to me. Good on you, by the way, OP, for doing that and not, you know, backing down and saying, okay, fine, just because it's your future mother-in-law and you want to respect her. No, I don't like that. Good on you for telling her she's in the wrong. He lied to me, so I left his number everywhere. I've been dating this guy I really liked for three months. I was happy and I thought things were going great. Eventually, I kind of just started feeling like he wasn't being honest with me, so I wanted to end things. Every time I'd bring up my concerns, he assured me it was all in my head and I needed to relax. He had at least two chances to leave me alone. Even though I liked him, I just couldn't shake the feeling. The day before yesterday, he showed me something funny on Facebook that he posted. But when I went back the next morning so I could send it to one of my friends, it wasn't there. So I started searching him under a different name and I found his real Facebook with all the pictures and videos of his actual long-term girlfriend in another state. He looked very much in love and I was very disappointed because I never knew and wouldn't have stayed around if I did. And I gave him chances to leave me alone. So yesterday, I spent all day signing him for everything I could find that asked for a number. Cat facts, weather updates in different states, car insurance quotes, life insurance, Bible verses, coupons, everything I could find. His phone will be so full of spam. Then I posted screenshots of our conversations all over their pictures together from as recent as the night before. I also took out his name so the number was visible at the top. He was so mad at me. I've never done anything like this before, but for years, men have been lying to me, breaking my heart, making me feel stupid, and it hurts, and I just snapped. But I do not feel bad, and I will not apologize. No, there's absolutely no way you should apologize. I mean, come on. He's hiding his secret long-term girlfriend from you. I've got to say that this is excellent revenge. Extremely petty, yes, but so, so annoying. Get in the comments if you are watching on YouTube. Have you ever been on one of these spam lists where your email or your phone number gets kind of leaked and you just get bombarded with the most rubbish spam email that you've ever seen? It is so annoying. Getting constantly pinged by these like random companies that don't exist that are all just trying to mug you off and like try and take your money and stuff like that. Oh, it's so annoying. I can't think of anything worse. Great revenge. Shaming a passive aggressive dude. I am a 30 year old woman and my grandfather passed away a few days ago and I was attending the funeral. 
I drove myself back home but needed to make a few stops to get the basics for the week. So I stopped at a local grocery store at like 10 at night and started just doing basic shopping. As I stared at the five different varieties of apples, I looked up as a cart goes behind me, bumping into me a little. Not enough to be seen as on purpose, just enough to get my attention. Standing before me is a man clearly in the early boomer category. I moved to the side and mutter an excuse me, thinking he would also like to stare at the ridiculous price of Honeycrisp apples. Nope, of course not. He looks at me for a bit too long before saying, nice dress, bit early for Halloween though, you'd look better in color. Well, that's a new one. I've got Croning resting female dog face, so I've gotten the you should smile comment a handful of times. I look him dead in the eyes with an exhausted expression that only someone who's been up since 4 a.m. to make a four hour drive for a funeral could have. I'll admit, I was too tired to even think that this was a clever retort. I was just being bluntly honest when I replied, I was just at a family member's funeral. He was silent for a bit too long, as if waiting for a punchline. He laughed awkwardly and I continued to stare at him with a blank expression that Wednesday Adams would be proud of. Eventually, he muttered an, oh, snap, sorry, and shuffled off like an ashamed bipedal slug. Not the greatest revenge in the world, but it definitely made my day a little better. Yeah, to be fair, I'm not even sure if that's revenge at all, right? You just told him exactly what's been going on and the reason why you're wearing all black. It is entirely on him in the first place, though, so I don't really know what more you could have done. Yeah, you went to a funeral. Don't assume that someone wearing black is wearing black just because they chose to do it. And also, I mean, the wider point is don't tell someone what they should and shouldn't wear. It's just weird. Like, imagine you go to a shop, right? And some person comes up to you and like, yeah, you look all right, but you'd be better wearing something else. I, I, I don't know how I'd react to that. Probably not in the best way. I think I've actually mentioned this before in one of my episodes, but still to this day, I remember going to the shops and the assistant, the shop assistant telling me, mate, I love your jumper. And I was like, you know what? What a lovely thing to say. He didn't need to say that. And the jumper wasn't even that nice, I'll be honest. It was uh, very pink. So maybe it was being satirical. I don't know. But nonetheless, I still remember that compliment. So to have the opposite of that happen to me, yeah, I definitely remember that and it wouldn't make me feel good. And the least that I'd tell that person is, yes, mate, I was just at a funeral for my dead grandfather.